away from Friday, so that's enough to make me happy. I hope you've all had a good week so far and that today's show makes it even better. We're here for Take Action Thursday, a day dedicated to talking about practical ways that we can start to take action in our own lives, right here, right now. So we're going to be talking about healthy eating. There's going to be games, special guests, and a very exciting cooking class with a real chef. So hang out with us to have some fun and learn along the way. Before we dive in, let's close our eyes and simply focus on the act of breathing. Stopping to focus on our breathing can help us set intentions and connect with our bodies for the day ahead. So let's try it. Awesome. All right, let's get into it. As you all know, it's so important to make healthy choices for a healthy body. There are so many benefits to showing an awareness for nutrition. It's important to eat nutritious foods to keep our energy levels up and our bodies and minds in good health. By developing healthy eating habits at a young age, we can have the right tools and knowledge to lead an overall healthy lifestyle as adults. Now, did you know that something as small as eating breakfast regularly before school can improve memory, problem solving, and concentration skills? These are all important to learning. Taking the time to eat breakfast can be tough, so we need to encourage one another to practice healthy habits. In fact, the We Eat Well campaign is one way we can all promote healthy eating in our own lives, our schools, and communities. With the help of this campaign, we can share facts to spread awareness of healthy eating. It starts by taking a healthy eating pledge and then getting your friends to join. You can get your school involved by organizing a healthy food challenge for the week or month and share your experiences on social media. Post interesting facts, healthy recipes, and raise awareness. You can even host a class food label challenge to learn and educate others about ingredients in your food. You can get everyone at home involved too. Cook together as a family and try new recipes for nutritious meals. And while you cook, check out the food labels to see what ingredients you're putting into your body. Once you feel good with how healthy eating looks at home and at school, try promoting it in your community. Research and create posters to encourage your neighborhood to eat healthy. Maybe even have a virtual picnic where neighbors can share what nutritious meals they've made. Empowering people to eat healthy is good for you and them, so give it a try. Now, the first step toward healthy eating is learning about it. One fact that everybody probably knows by now is that we need to eat a variety of healthy foods each day. So plenty of vegetables and fruits, some protein, and some whole grain foods are all keys to eating a healthy, balanced meal. But healthy eating is more than the foods you eat. It's also about where, when, why, and how you eat. So here are four tips on healthy eating habits. First, be mindful of your eating habits. Take time to eat and notice when you're hungry and when you're full. Listen to your body. Next, cook more often. Plan what you eat so you don't feel tempted to eat fast foods. But you don't have to do this alone. Involve others in planning and preparing meals. It can become a home activity. Third, enjoy your food. Culture and fruit traditions can be a part of healthy eating, so we should all embrace it. Last, eat meals with others. It's always best to set time aside where you can share a meal with family or friends. Now don't stop your research there. You can check out the We Eat Well campaign to learn more about healthy eating and ways to encourage your school and community to make healthy choices. Leading a more nutrition-filled, active life is a right we all deserve. So now I want to hear from you. We've been talking about different ways that we can encourage others to eat healthy. So I want you to share one idea about how to get others involved in healthy eating. Use the chat function to post your comment and we'll check them out later in the show. Personally, I like to get the whole family eating healthy by planning our meals in advance. When we're not rushing to make food, there's a better chance that we'll make a balanced meal with veggies, protein, and wheat. All right, I'm so excited for our first guest. Best known for his hits like Sound of Your Heart and Reminding Me with Vanessa Hudgens, Canadian singer, songwriter, and producer who uses his platform to spread awareness of hunger and health, here is Sean Hook. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, Sean. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So I'm going to be asking you a few questions um, for our viewers. So first question is, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. It's, uh, it's a nice day in Vancouver, British Columbia, and I'm excited to be here uh, performing and, and, and watching the whole show today. 
Awesome. So our next question. In the spirit of Take Action Thursday, tell us what inspired you last holiday to start a fundraiser with WE to build a school overseas. Yeah, so I, I did my first Me to We trip uh, two summers ago, and I learned about all the We pillars, and I had a chance to actually see the classrooms on the ground, uh, what they are now with the help of We and what they were before We got involved. And it's quite a drastic change. And I was inspired to help out this year with the holiday, or, or sorry, last holiday, uh, last holiday's fundraiser to let people know that they can help contribute to build more schools because education is so powerful and it empowers uh, all the people on the ground there uh, to, to lead a better lifestyle. And uh, it was something that inspired me when I was there. And it was great to see that so many people contributed and a school is, is now being built. Wow, that is amazing. So now with all that giving back, sometimes we just need a break. What is your favorite show to binge? <laughs> it's funny, I never, I don't watch the same show over again, so I'm always looking for new things. And currently, I'm really into the uh, the Michael Jackson documentary, the or not, Michael Jordan documentary, The Last Dance. He's one of my favorite basketball players growing up, and uh, I've been watching that. I want to see the the one on deck right now is Becoming the Michelle Obama, which I haven't seen yet, but that looks really good as well. Awesome. Okay, so our last question: You have a new single titled "I Don't Want to Dance." What was the inspiration behind it and what message do you hope people take away from it? Yeah, that song is basically about being somewhere where you don't, where I didn't feel like I was really fitting in and, and wanting to be somewhere with someone that loves me for me, where someone that I don't have to feel like I have to be somewhere else, someone else. Uh, so it's just basically about being with someone who doesn't judge you. And, and the song is titled, I Don't Want to Dance, but in the chorus, the, the second part of that is, unless you want to. I don't want to dance unless you want to. So it's basically about having a good time with people who love you for you. Awesome. All right, now before you leave, I have one more question that I really hope you can help us with. Could you maybe play us a song? <laughs> yes, I can play you a song. This is, I Don't Want to Dance. I just want to talk now. But honestly, I'm inside out. Nothing with the walls in. The cars in on me, cars in on me. Tired of fake faces. Telling me as if they know. On my pages. That I've never shown. I've never shown. Surrounded by all my friends. But I'm feeling like I don't fit in. So I keep on pretending that I'm not missing up.
<laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Sean, for taking the time to speak with us today. And a big thank you for playing a song. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great show. Of course. Bye. See you, Miley. Okay, so now we're going to dive into one of my favorite segments, the good news story. COVID-19 is impacting grocery store supply chains and demand schedules in both big cities and rural communities across America. But for Gustavus, an icy seaside town seven hours away from Juneau, Alaska, the disruption is much more serious matter. In late April, the town's grocer set off from Gustavus in a small boat to the world's most remote Costco warehouse. After seven hours, Toshua Parker arrived and loaded pallets containing $20,000 worth of eggs, flour, meat, canned foods, produce, and we assume toilet paper. For the lone grocer, it's what is required to run his small store called Ice Trait Wholesale, also fondly known as Toshko, which keeps his 446 neighbors fed. He's been taking orders by phone for everything from washing machines to eggs before making his weekly seven hour journey to the Alaskan capital to stock up. It's the ultimate challenge for a grocer who must shift an enormous amount of stock to keep the town fed and healthy. So thank you to Toshio Parker, you are such a hero. All right, what a day we have had so far. We've been talking a lot about food, how important nutrition and health awareness is and why we need it. Now we have a big surprise for you all, so I hope you're ready. PC Children's Charity and we have partnered to help put the power of food in your hands. We want you to be empowered to make healthier choices now and in the future, because when you eat well, you do well. Here to help us explore more about the power of food is Chef Tom, executive chef at President's Choice to do a cooking demo. Hi folks, welcome to my kitchen. Uh, President's Choice Children's Charity and we have partnered to help put the power of food in your hands. Now we want you to be empowered to make healthier choices now and in the future. And because when you eat well, you do well. <laughs> Here to help us explore more about the power of food is Chef Tom, executive chef at President's Choice. Chef Tom, welcome to my kitchen and thank you for letting me come to yours, I guess. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Love it. I'm looking forward to uh, cooking with you. This is going to be great. Awesome. Likewise. Um, Chef, can you, let's just start out, what are, we, what are we making today? Tell the folks at home. Well, today I thought we'd show everybody how to make a pasta carbonara. Uh, I think everybody loves the flavors, but sometimes they're intimidated about how to make it. They're always worried about scrambling eggs. So today we're going to show them how to do that without any worries. <laughs> Great. I'm excited and terrified. Okay, so before we get started, let's, uh, let's go over the ingredients that we're going to be using because it's always important, no matter where you, what you're doing or whatever you're cooking, that you're really well organized. In the kitchen, we call it mise en place, which means everything in its place. And if you get organized, life is so much easier in the kitchen. So let's show you what we have here. So let me show you the ingredients. We have some bacon. Yeah. Um, typically, um, the, the recipe calls for guanciello or pancetta. We don't have that, so we're going to use a little bit of bacon. We want to show people what you can do with things in your fridge and in your pantry. So looks really nice. This is what mine looks like. <laughs> they look exactly the same. So now you're making me look bad. <laughs> then we have uh, Parmesan cheese, yep. which I had in the fridge. Traditionally, it's Pecorino Romano. But again, we're making little adjustments. This is our recipe. So whatever you have in the pantry is what's really important. A couple of cloves of garlic, and that is completely optional. I love garlic, so I smash some garlic. We're putting that in. When you yes. press garlic, what is? How do you how do you do that? Do you just use a spoon? What I do is I just peel the garlic, yep. and let me show you. I'm gonna go grab a knife. I hope you can see that. Yeah, I can. Okay, I'll move this out of the way. So I just take the back of my knife carefully and just give it a little smack like that. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. And what, what that does is brings out all the natural oils of the uh, garlic. Okay. A little bit of parsley for garnish, which okay. is really cool. I've got my eggs, which we can whisk up. So if you haven't done that yet, Spencer, whisk okay. those eggs up. I'm going to whisk them. Perfect. So right now, I think what we need to do is yep. we're gonna move over and we're gonna start, we're gonna put our pasta in our salted water. 
Are you ready to go, Spencer? Ready. Let's do it. Now you want to take you want to take your pasta and put it right in the middle. Okay. And just give that a twist. I'm gonna have just to spin it. That's it. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> That's perfect. So now the pasta is not sticking on you. It looks good. Perfect. So this is good. So while we're at the stove, Spencer, let's start with our our bacon. So we're gonna turn on our uh, burner and heat up our pan. Yep. Okay. And then we have our bacon right here. Yeah. And we're gonna just put in our bacon and we're going to just cook it until it gets nice and crispy. In, in uh, culinary terms, that means we're rendering the fat. Stir this bacon here. Um, bacon was, I found, very hard to dice. What is the secret to that? The secret with dicing bacon is you only run your knife one way. So you, you have a nice sharp knife and you pull your knife forward. So you take your knife and pull forward. You don't make a sawing motion whenever you're cooking, uh, cutting meat. What you wanna do is just take it and run it straight across with a sharp knife, makes your life a lot easier. And keeping the bacon cold really helps too because it's a little bit firmer and it's not, it doesn't get all soft and it's a lot tougher that way. Oh, fine. Okay, that's super helpful for next time. <laughs> Um, so, Chef, how do you normally develop your recipes for, like, so that they taste good, but they're also, like, healthy-ish? What we do is we kind of look at, you know, the Canadian food guide. It's really a, a good guide for us. I know it's changed recently. So what we want to do, especially when we're doing our kids' classes and our cooking schools, uh, we want to have a really good balance. That's what's really important. So when we're developing our recipes, we always keep that in mind. Um, you know, sometimes you need to celebrate and it, maybe it's a little bit higher sugar for birthday parties and things like that. But what we want to do is we want to reach a nice balance where, you know, your the nutrition is there, but the flavor is also there. Some people equate, um, you know, healthy with not a lot of taste. And I beg to differ. You can make healthy food so incredibly tasty. Absolutely. So how's your bacon doing there? Uh, it's taking a minute to heat up. I'm just gonna maybe turn my stove up just a little bit. Okay, perfect. So chef, how did you like, where did your love for cooking and, and, and becoming a chef like blossom from? Well, I, I always had a curiosity with cooking. So from a young age, I used to uh, watch my mom cook, help her out, really, I really enjoyed it. And mm -hmm. then as a growing up as a teenager, I worked in um, small restaurants and I really enjoyed that. I just felt very empowered and it was amazing to see something from a raw state and the finished product. It, it was like instant gratification as you could see, you could see your work and all your efforts come to fruition. So it was right. really fun. And I think, you know, every day since I've been cooking, I've never dreaded waking up um, and saying, oh, I got to go to work. I really, I know a lot of people use the term, you know, they have a passion for it, yeah. but I truly do. Just make sure that every day you wake up, you're happy to do it. I love that. That's so nice. I think that's so important for everyone, specifically for young people that might be watching that are trying to figure out, you know, like, what do I do once sort of the world goes back to normal? And I have to start thinking about like what I do after school and my life. I think that's a really important lesson of like, you got to find something that you really love. I think that's so important. I agree, and I think, like, especially um, during these uh, tough times, there's always, you know, there's always opportunities. When there's a problem, I think there's always solutions. So it's just being creative. And for a lot of for a lot of things, it's going to be actually beneficial to our communities, right? Okay. So I think, especially togetherness, like what we're doing right now, cooking together, this wouldn't have happened if we weren't in that situation, right? So correct, correct. So Spencer, how, how's your bacon looking? Oh, that looks great. Great. So well, at this point, Spencer, let's put in our two pieces of garlic that we crushed. I'll crush. yeah. So this way we can pick up some flavor. I'm a little bit ahead of you because my I have a, a super fast gas stove here. So I'm gonna turn down my bacon a little bit and I've added my, um, my garlic. You can keep it on high until you see that crispiness. Just make sure that you're not burning that garlic. Okay, so you just put the whole cloves in the pan and that's it? Yeah, we're gonna take them out in a little while. They're okay. just there for flavoring. We're gonna just take them out before we add our pasta. So what I'm gonna do now is we've taken our eggs. 
You got them? And we're going to add our grated Parmesan cheese inside, nice. right into that bowl. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to give that a nice mix. Okay. And then what I'd like to do is, while that's happening, yeah. uh, you're going to take pepper or pe pepper mill, whatever you have, yeah. and I'm just going to put about 20 turns of my, or my pepper mill into my eggs and cheese. Yeah. And again, if you, if you don't like a lot of pepper, you don't need to use it. But I would say about a teaspoon of pepper would work great. Okay. So we can just set that aside once we mix in the eggs, the cheese, and the pepper. Perfect. Okay. And I'm going to check my pasta. Right. And I know, there's a, I know there's a lot of ways people throw it up in the ceiling and they do all these fancy things. But there's a simpler way, people. Just bite into it. <laughs> That's usually what I do too. So, Chef, like everyone right now is obviously doing a lot more cooking at home than maybe some folks are used to. Um, and you know, we're we're social distancing and we're physically distancing and we're trying to like avoid trips to the grocery store as much as possible. Is, do you have some suggestions as to like some non-perishables that like everyone should have in their pantry that are you know delicious, a little bit healthy, but like good to have on hand? Yeah, I find like um, if you have like pasta for sure is a great staple. That's why we're doing that. But anything like any legumes, like uh, even canned lentils, uh, some beans, kidney beans, really high in protein. You can do a lot with them. You can make, you know, a chili uh, with just bean chili. Tastes really good. So I would say um, having that on hand is really important. And I find here with my family, that tuna is a really big hit. So before you take the pasta out, if you have a little um, cup or something like that. I do. What we wanna do is we wanna take some of this starchy pasta water out and just preserve it. Copy, okay. Cause that's gonna help us emulsify our pasta. And then once you take out that, um, that garlic, yeah. turn off the heat on that pan totally. Okay. So now we're going to take our pasta just like this. Yeah. You're going to get your tongs. Yeah. And we're going to we're going to put it in that pan with the bacon. Okay. So what you want to do is one we don't we won't add the eggs until we stop hearing that sizzle, Spencer. Okay. So should we be stirring the pasta and the bacon around, I assume? Yeah, give it a nice stir, coat the bacon and the pasta together. Okay. And then if you want to put like a, a teeny bit of that water that we reserved in yeah. there, it'll nice. help cool that pan down too. Okay. So just a teeny bit. Okay. That's great. Fine. Now what we're going to do yeah. is this is where we work really quickly. Okay. So we're going to remove our fork out of our bowl. Yep. And we're what we're going to do is really quickly, we're going to put the... Uh, egg in the center of the pasta, and then we're going to start moving the pasta quickly, vigorously, okay? Right. We don't want it to scramble. We're going to keep moving this. It's going to give a nice creaminess. Yep. You're doing great, Spencer. Keep it up. <laughs> now, Spencer, you're going to take a little bit of that reserved water and add about half of what you have. Okay. Got it. And then... You're going to just keep stirring until that pasta and water all absorbs and it's nicely emulsified. How's it looking? Oh my gosh, it looks so good. So we just keep moving. The heat of the heat from the uh, noodles yep. is cooking that egg. Okay. Does it look nice and creamy? It does. It does not look like eggs. It looks like a, almost like a fettuccine, like Alfredo. Yep. Guess what? We've just we've just achieved perfection, Spencer. Yes. <laughs> we are awesome. <laughs> Let me give you a virtual high five. Yes. Okay, so right now, yeah. well, it's time for us to plate up. Okay. So I'm just gonna add that right into the center of our plate. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to go nice and high and okay. twirl it. That looks delicious, Spencer. It does. It looks so good. Oh, my gosh. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of the uh, chopped parsley. And if you want at this point, you could add more cheese, but I think there's enough cheese. Yeah. So there you have it. Oh my gosh. Spaghetti carbonara. Oh my gosh. All right, good. Wow. Chef, that's so good. Oh my gosh. So, like, one final question. Sure. Sort of, why, why is like cooking um, and specifically like nu nutritional cooking so important to you? I just think it's such an important um, way of living. It's so important to everyone. It's especially when you start off at a young age, you know, having good eating habits and nutrition is so important for education, for energy, for playing sports. It's so important in everything uh, you do. I know it's an old saying, but you know, you are what you eat. And if you eat healthy food, I think I notice it when I'm eating good, you know, food that isn't processed. I always feel like I have a lot more energy and I feel, you know, like I can conquer anything in front of me. <laughs> Absolutely. So chef, if people like, this is a great recipe and it's so delicious folks, like definitely you're going to need to make this yourself. But if people want more recipes and stuff from you, how can they find those things? Well, if you go to uh, pc.ca, that's our website. Uh, there's a lot of recipes there. And also, if you go to our, our President's Choice Children's Charity um, website, there's tons of information there and recipes. So, you know, there's a lot of resources, but uh, our charity does some great work. And one of the things they do is uh, it's so important to them to keep um, young people's minds healthy by feeding those minds. So, it's really important to us. For more tools and resources, you can check out We Eat Well campaign and President's Choice Children's Charity, where you can gain knowledge about food and learn to take charge of your eating habits. Chef, I want to thank you so much for doing with this, with this means you're allowing me to do it with you. It is so good. We appreciate the time. And um, find Chef and all the social media things and get some new recipes, folks. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much for working with me and cooking with me, Spencer. It's been a true pleasure. Likewise, buddy. Have a great afternoon, and I'm going to go back to my plate. <laughs> you go. Me too. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That was so cool. Thank you so much, Chef Tom, for taking the time to show us that today. And thank you, Spencer, for leading us through that. Now, I think we can all say we're a little better equipped to bring healthy eating habits into our own lives. Whether it's for you, your family, friends, or community, everyone needs a little reminder on the importance of staying nourished. All right, now earlier today, I asked you a question, and I hope you've all had some time to answer that in the chat function. If not, get your last minute answers in. Now earlier, I asked you to share one idea about how to get others involved in healthy eating. Let's read some of your comments right now. It's hard in quarantine not to snack all the time but my sisters and I try to make green smoothies every morning for our fruit intake. Wow, that's amazing. I actually had a smoothie for breakfast this morning. Yes, yeah, smoothies are a great way to get your fruit and vegetable intake. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. That is so true. Now that we're at home, we're eating out less and having more home-cooked meals as a family. That's amazing, same with my family. Um, we're having a lot of home-cooked meals and it's super great to get all of your food groups in there. Awesome, those were some great suggestions. Thank you so much for sharing all your ideas on how to get everyone involved in healthier eating practices. All right, now before we go, I wanna say one last thing. Healthy eating isn't always easy. Like any habit, it takes patience and practice. So keep on trying and never give up. Put your health first always. Be sure to check out the We Eat Well campaign to learn more about the steps you can take to make the world a better place, one healthy meal at a time. This has been a wonderful show. Thank you for learning about healthy eating with me. We have a special Macklemore performance from the We Day Seattle stage coming up. But before we get to that, I wanna leave you with one final thought. We all have the power to make changes in our lives. Why not start with the food you put in, the, in your body? Let's make sure everyone has the tools they need to take charge in building healthy eating habits. All right, everyone, take care of yourselves and each other. See you next time. Enjoy Macklemore.
turn to the map. What it is, what it does, what it is, what it isn't. Looking for a better way to get a better bit of city. Getting on the internet, checking in, who hear me? Get up. Good shot, he'll shut pocket. Little bit of humble, little bit of nauseous. Like Rocky Cosby's for the game. Nope, nope, y'all can't copy yet. Bad, we're walking. This here is our party. My posse's bound on Broadway. And we did it all with one music. I shed my skin, put my bones into everything. I record to it. And yeah, I'm on. Let that stage light go and shine.